For chapter six, it's both metabolic pathways and enzymes. And so for the enzyme portion, we're going to start with an introduction to enzymes through Edpuzzle. So let's go ahead and make eight boxes. Now, if you're using a composition book, you will want to make your boxes in your book. Or if you don't have it yet, then um, make it small enough to be able to fit in your book. Okay. Uh, we will watch the intro here through Edpuzzle and answer in these boxes. And then in class, we'll continue them. Okay, so here we go, enzymes. Enzymes are catalysts. They are biological catalysts. Um, but first, let's talk in general what a catalyst is. So a catalyst is something that speeds up a chemical reaction without being used or consumed. So this word here, without being consumed or used up. So when we talk about a chemical reaction, you could see this test tube here is going through a chemical reaction and I have it as shown like in different colors. So this chemical reaction is happening kind of slowly. Uh, in chem, you may have used heat as a catalyst to speed things up. So here, if I add heat, the reaction, same reaction, just goes faster. And the fire isn't consumed or used up, it just sped up the process. So it wouldn't make sense in biology to use heat to speed things up inside of our bodies, so instead, we use enzymes. Enzymes are proteins, and they are catalytic. So they are a catalytic protein that speeds up chemical reactions. All right. And so let's go ahead and talk to them. They are proteins, and once in a while, you might have an RNA molecule that can act as its own enzyme. They facilitate or help chemical reactions. And they can increase the rate that a reaction is happening without being used. And they do this by lowering the activation energy. They don't change the free energy that's available. I'm sorry, that is released or required. And enzymes, for most things that happen in biology, in our cells, our bodies, our plants, etc., cetera, um, they, most of the chemical reactions are going to be using enzymes. And they're highly specific. This uh, kind of like a lock and a key is the analogy that we will use. And there's thousands and thousands of different enzymes in our cells, all with their own job. Okay, and they control the reactions of life. They're super important to our understanding of biology. So enzyme vocabulary, we have enzyme, is this purple thing right here. Then we have what's called a substrate. This um, is what we would call in chemistry a reactant. So here's kind of a big deal. When we talk about chemical reactions, we can call the beginning molecule or molecules a reactant. However, when we use the term substrate, substrate is implying that there's an enzyme being used in this chemical reaction. So if we're talking, talking about science, you know, oh, the substrate, I want you to think substrate is just the reactant. It's what we start with when we use enzymes. So here we have a substrate. Um, and then they join together. So right here you have an enzyme substrate complex. And then the reaction occurs and you have products. Um, and so uh, where the substrate fits into the enzyme, we call that the active site. Okay, so here we have our enzyme and then our active site. And then you have your substrate come in. And then there's going to be a chemical reaction or changes that occur. And then you have your product produced. And that's a very basic understanding. I think this is like a ninth grade level understanding. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and compare and contrast, or what's the difference between a reactant and a substrate. But at the same time, how are they the same? So I want you to also think about how are, how are the words substrate, enzyme, active site, and products all related. If you were to write a sentence or two that explained how enzymes worked, I'd like you to write that sentence using all of these words in your box number one. You can always rewind the video and go back and look at it and hear it again if you'd like. Oh, so this is uh, how a protein folds. So if you remember from class on Wednesday how proteins are made of amino acids, you have the primary structure here, which is the order of the amino acids. You have the secondary structure, which is the accordion or the beta pleated sheet. And then you have your alpha helix that's based by hydrogen bonds. And then you have your tertiary structure. So that tertiary structure, ooh, let's erase some of that. That tertiary structure... Uh, is based on interactions between the R groups. So you might have some hydrophobic interactions, some disulfide bridges, ionic bonds, 
Um, so your protein folds up based on the molecular interactions of our groups. And it gets this funky shape. Now in proteins, and a lot of things in life, but proteins in particular, shape determines function. The shape of the protein matters. How it folds up matters. You change the shape, you change the function. So here is an enzyme and a substrate. Now I'm going to remove the enzyme so we can see inside. Now remember, enzymes are proteins. Proteins are made of amino acids that interact with each other, folding up into a designated shape. So here's the shape of the enzyme. It fits very closely with the substrate. Now, if we remove that purple color, though, you can see the active site is going to interact with the substrate. There's surface properties of that active site. So this active site right here, if there's a positive charge on your substrate, well, maybe there's a negative charge right here. And so the, the properties, the surface like properties of that active site need to complement or like um, accept, I guess, the substrate. They need to be complementary and um, not repelling each other. So that substrate fits in complementary, I guess, to that active site. So this, you can kind of see if this is our active site right here. Um, you can see how this, if this is our substrate, how there's different interactions happening between the substrate and the surface properties of the active site. And when I say surface properties, I just mean the charges, the polar, nonpolar, um, hydrogen bonding, like the different um, chemical properties of that region of the protein. Hopefully this helps. We can explain this further in class uh, and further elaborate for you. Okay, so protein um, and enzyme, proteins or enzymes, and their substrate fit together like a lock and key. Now this is a very simplistic model of like how we explain it kind of in ninth grade. Um, and so the substrate fits in to the structure of the enzyme and its active site very specifically. Now hydrogen bonds will hold them together, the substrate and the enzyme or the active site, like a lock and a key. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that is uh, to give you the idea that each enzyme is specific for its substrate. And so just like my car key won't open my classroom. <laughs> and so same thing, enzymes have specific reactions that they catalyze. Uh, okay, but in reality, it's more accurate and induced fit model, where when the substrate attaches in to the active site, um, the enzyme has a slight conformational change in shape, which a conformational change means a change in shape uh, leading to a slightly tighter fit. Now, it's not a permanent change in shape. It just kind of like puts a little bit of pressure on the substrate, and it brings the substrate into um, like the right orientation for a reaction to occur. So I want you to think about how is the induced fit model different from the lock and key model of how enzymes function. And if you're like, oh man, I don't really know. I'm not sure if I'm right. I want you to think about when I put my key into my car, does the lock grab onto the key? Probably not. Okay, that's your box too. Uh, now how does this work? So we have two options when it comes to reactions in an enzyme. You can have synthesis. And synthesize or to, is to build or to make. So here, um, the enzyme brings together substrates and helps like form a product. So you might have two separate substrates that are joined together into a product. That'd be synthesis. And then you have digestion. And this, you have the active site is going to put stress, the enzyme is going to put stress on the bonds uh, that must be broken to separate the molecules. So now you have digestion. And that is, or like our two options kind of of what may happen in an active site. And that is your box number three. And that's it for our first Ed Puzzle. Great job, guys.